All right, what's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be a play test of the new Pred Strike in the laced model. This is a boot that I have worn once so far. So did the review on them obviously, and then wore them for a training session. So I wanted to give you guys a kind of really good idea of what these are like to play in. I'll walk you through the whole session similar to the laceless model of this. And I really am excited to start to bring you guys these play tests and just kind of talk through as I'm doing all these different drills. Uh, we do have a goal with net I found a field. Thank you to uh, some of my Instagram followers who recommended this spot to me. It's a really, really cool facility. So we'll be here probably most of the time filming. I am on an AG pitch, so I'll talk a little bit about differences between AG and FG with this new sole plate and really looking forward to getting after it. So here we go. All right. Boots look absolutely fantastic here on this AG pitch. Really looking forward to uh, getting these on feet. It's been a couple weeks since I've actually put these on. So looking forward to uh, getting after it. Here we go. Nice. Yeah, I so this upper really surprised me, if I'm honest. Um, I was expecting something a little bit more similar to what the accuracy had, but this um, unbelievable Hybrid Touch 2.0 upper really does a nice job of wrapping your foot. One of the things that I love about wearing laced boots is not only do you get an adaptable amount of lockdown and everything, but you also get the ability to like untie and tie the laces over the course of an entire training session, which will be super helpful as I start to break these in. You guys know with the laced model, that's a boot that during the play test, I started to um, take those boots on and off pretty frequently uh, over the course of that play test, just because they were giving me a little bit of hot spots here on the outside of the boot, which is very, very common for me. Um, I imagine these are gonna be about the same, maybe a little bit less just because we have a little bit, like if I were to pop in them right now and try to play with them without the laces tied, obviously I don't recommend that just because it's gonna be um, not a situation that you want for your ankle and, and knee health. But uh, overall, I think for me, a laced boot just provides that extra bit of flexibility as far as um, going around different types of foot shapes and all that stuff. Um, and really gives that nice fit. So there you go. That's what they look like on feet. Absolutely fantastic fitting football boots in my opinion. There's a tiny bit of space here uh, where I guess a lot of boots kind of tend to bow and stuff in that area for me, um, but I imagine that over the course of this session and over the course of being able to untie and then retie these boots, that thing, that little bowing will go away as I'm able to break in this side and I'm able to tie the laces a little bit tighter. So honestly, I'm not super stressed about it either way. So here we go, let's get into the warm up. And yes, for those who are wondering, I am an Arsenal fan, so uh, y'all can uh, argue in the comments who's the best team, but uh, here we go. Getting into the warm up here. Um, already the sole plate I think does a nice job of sitting pretty low to the ground, which is something that I really prefer. I know in the um, initial review that I did, I noted that the sole plate of these are gonna be pretty suited for both artificial and um, firm ground pitches. And I would stand by that, even just doing little side to side shuffles here. You do get a tiny bit of stud pressure, um, but I imagine that that's partly because of the way that this turf area is. So this turf is um, a little bit less padded than maybe I would like. Um, it's definitely a bit less premium than um, some other turfs that I've been on, uh, but no complaints here because it is wide open to the public and a really, really cool location to be in as well. Um, but yeah, I think the way that these triangular studs dig into the ground. Uh, for FG, they're absolutely beautiful. Um, that's one thing that I did a training session with my team actually the other day and in these, and the stud pattern did such a good job of digging into the ground on natural grass pitches, especially on nice short ones. Um, and then for these types of AG pitches, zero complaints so far. We'll see once we get into some footwork and a little bit more aggressive cutting and stuff, should be totally fine, um, but again, that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for a pair of boots. I imagine that the uh, AG model of these will come out at some point in the future, although I've noticed that a lot of boot brands um, similar to Adidas, Nike, Puma. Puma's done a little bit better at this, I think, in general. Obviously, the Mizuno and the Asics of the world knows where it's at with the conical studs. I think that's just the best way to go, but a lot of manufacturers have gone a little bit more towards hybrid types stud patterns. So 
stud patterns that maybe the, you know, they'll call it FG, but it's a little bit more neutral than something like a Vapor, something like, um, I guess the, the Crazy Fast, or even a Furon for that matter. I think all those stud patterns really uh, are probably too aggressive, I would say, for AG. Honestly, even the GX FG model I found to be pretty aggressive on AG, especially those star-shaped studs. And that stud is very similar to the way that um, the, the stud pattern on this boot is, this Predator. Uh, except the Predator has done a nice job of making a pretty neutral stud pattern. Yes, sure, they're uh, multi-directional, like a little more aggressive, of course, than a conical stud, um, but for the most part, feeling these in like side to side like this, good amount of pivot power, but also not too much that you're gonna be kind of slipping and sliding all over the place, which is great. All right, getting a little bit hotter in the warm up here, gonna start uh, with some ladder stuff, which will be great. Get a good sense of what these are like, uh, moving my feet a little bit quicker. So here we go, run through a couple different patterns right away. And then side shuffle through, get a little bit of lateral cuts. Yeah, nice. Um, one of the things I'm noticing right away is the difference obviously between these and the laceless model. That heel area where I talked about some of the rotational slippage is not even remotely there with these. I can feel it a little bit, um, especially when going side to side here, right? Boom, boom. But it's super, super minimal, like nothing that breaking in a pair of boots. I feel like I get a little bit of slippage right when I start to wear a pair of football boots. And then as I break boots in, it really does a good job of getting locked into that heel. And similar to the way that um, that little area kind of on the side, on the outside of my ankle goes away with boots as they break in, especially if they actually can break in. That's something that the heel area helps as well. <laughs> yeah, nice. Really good job of uh, digging into the ground here. I mean, I know it's AG, so obviously an FG plate on AG is gonna be pretty, pretty uh, good from a lateral stability perspective, but I'm not feeling any hot spots any part of the boot, um, nor am I feeling anything um, with any sort of stud pressure as well, which is a big deal for uh, the FG sole plates, which is awesome. So no complaints with the start of this session. Obviously I have worn these once already, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Forward, now we're just gonna go a little bit of change of direction moving forward. Nice, really good there. Um, I love how this hybrid touch feels, man. This is like outside of maybe grip knit. This is probably one of my favorite uppers from a synthetic perspective. Let's change that camera angle a little bit so you guys can see the other side. Boom. So yeah, hybrid touch. Always been one of my favorites. There you go, bang, 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 nice. Um, really, really lovely mold around the foot. I am starting to feel a little bit of that squeeze on the outside of the foot, similar to where I always do. Um, but that's honestly no issues there, just here on the outside, starting to kind of expand and stuff. In fact, I'll probably take uh, the laces out for just a second, untie them, and just get a uh, really quick break from kind of the pressure that new boots give you. And again, this is probably our total, our number three that I've worn these. So pretty good for a pair of synthetic football boots. So just kind of pop in and out like that and uh, get these off my feet for two seconds as we start to move into some of the next more intense phases of the session. All right, something that I wanna start to comment on as well is uh, as we move into more ball stuff, one of the questions that I get asked quite often on my channel, although you guys know I only have had these for probably a week or so now, is do these have more grip than a Phantom GX? And in this little instep area on the medial side of the foot, yes, absolutely. This grip element is better 
better, well, better. It's more grippy. It's up to you to decide whether it's better or not, but it's definitely more grippy than the GX just in general. Um, but because the entirety of basically the midfoot forward on the GX is made completely from grip knit, you're really going to get a more, it's going to feel like you have more grip in general on the GX than a boot like this, uh, particularly because the only times that you're really going to feel this are with striking, uh, a little bit of juggling because it does kind of come up onto that toe area, especially on the medial side. And then other than that, um, you're really not going to feel it on the outside of the foot because there's no grip there. So I would say GX overall is going to feel more grippy, um, but for shooting and crossing and stuff, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, I'm sure. Uh, and we'll talk through some of the grip elements and how it affects your your ability to bend and whip the ball. All right, gonna tie my shoes really quick. And next little bout is the same exercise pretty much. So I'll go through a couple different patterns with the feet. I always recommend doing two to three rounds of each of the patterns that you do through the ladder just to get your mind body connection kind of flowing on those and then switch patterns. That way you're getting different types of uh, brain body challenges. That's really, really good for warm up, and then also gets kind of that proprioceptive activity uh, ticked off for the beginning of the session. Um, now we're just going to add at the end, instead of going through like an agility little bit with running, we're just going to add the ball and I'm just going to kind of freestyle dribble through those four cones. So let's hop into it. Here we go. And I'm really trying to get a sense of what that grip is like. Nice. Okay. So definitely noticeable, especially as I'm taking my touch inside, inside like that. Um, this is, these are the Euro match balls for 2024. So they're pretty sticky and obviously it's not raining right now. So the boots are pretty sticky. The pitch is pretty sticky. The ball is pretty sticky. So hopefully give you guys like the most extreme version of what that grip looks like and feels like. Here we go. Boom. Nice. Yeah, honestly, I, I know a lot of people don't want to wear the Preds because it's like, oh, it's too grippy. It's, you know, it's whatever. It's like, it's too much. Honestly, I would say these are really nice. Like, I'm a huge fan of this hybrid touch. I think they do such a nice job of wrapping your foot. And if you're somebody who doesn't like the synthetic of say the crazy fast models, this is a synthetic that is going to mold to your foot pretty much regardless of what type of foot shape you have, even though it's definitely a little bit more, even though it's definitely a little bit more thin starting out than the accuracy was. I know that was kind of a big complaint of some people who saw the initial reviews, but I got to tell you, like, for, and I'm going to say this like in the nicest way possible. If you haven't tried on a pair of boots, don't comment in the comment section being like, yeah, but they're shit. Cause they're, you know, less wide than the last generation. Well, you don't know that cause you haven't tried them on. So don't sit here and pretend like you've worn them and you know everything about the football boot. Like that's, that's exactly my gripe with some people online of like, if you're going to say, all these things about lockdown and about the football boots in general, like you got to actually wear them and you got to, you got to be able to compare them with other boots that you've worn. So, you know, even if you've worn the accuracy and that's the only tether you have to this type of predator, please, please, please stop telling people that they're bad or they're super good. Let people make their own judgments of them because at the end of the day, everyone's foot is different and everyone's going to fit in each boot differently. So that's all I ask. Um, as you guys know, my philosophy with boots is always, they're only good if they fit you. And that's something that I don't think a lot of people start to notice. Like, yeah, sure. There are objective features of football boots that are really great. But like at the end of the day, if you're somebody who really only wants to wear the leather, then this boot isn't going to be good for you. And that's fair enough. Like it doesn't matter. Like I'm not here to tell you what boots you should wear. I'm here to tell you, get the best fit possible. And hopefully with these videos, especially the playtest videos, as you can see, like I'm taking them through their paces and stuff on different surfaces. Like the whole idea is that um, they're able to give you guys a good idea of what they actually feel like. Cause I think at the end of the day, it's going to be up to you guys to decide what boots you want. I don't want you to listen to marketing. I don't want you to listen to all the other stuff. Like, yeah, technology is cool. But like if the boots don't fit 
don't buy them, you know? Next little exercise you guys have seen before, this is that kind of all, all different types of touches with the cone weave and the skill set. We're gonna go through a couple different rounds of this to get different types of touches. That way you guys can see what, you know, the sticky on the inside feels like, the uh, little bit more matte addition or, or matte, I should say matte experience on the outside feels like, and then of course, like sole rolling and all that stuff. So here we go. Figure eight. Nice, nice. Lots more, lots more lockdown than the laceless model. Here we go. A little stick. Boom. Nice. That's great. The weight of these shoes is also something that I've noticed. Boom. And finish through. Nice. Okay. The weight of something that I've also noticed with these boots um, compared to the accuracy, again, like weight in general doesn't really bother me that much. Um, in fact, I don't really care about it that often. But I will say, in comparison to last generation, the sensation of wearing these is so much lighter. Like, genuinely, it makes a difference. Um, I don't think it makes a difference as far as like what's better or worse, but I'm somebody who, I don't know, doesn't usually care that much about weight, but if I have the choice between a boot that is heavier versus and clunkier feeling versus something like this that's like almost verging into like, heavier speed boot category like seven like sub seven ounces that's pretty that's pretty baller for a shoe that's supposed to be for like power and stuff right <laughs> so here we go round two boom yeah sole rolls feel fantastic really impressed with the way these work nice turn lovely shot fake love that touch Ooh. losing it a little bit here we go Boom, all the way through. Nice. So I am noticing a tiny bit of slippage in the heel area. I am wearing super thin socks right now. So that's also something to keep in mind. Like I'm actually gonna use this opportunity as we talk to uh, unlace the boots again. Give me a little bit of a breather. Even though it's not necessary, usually I'll do this like three to four times a session in the first couple wears just to honestly just to save my feet like at the end of the day it doesn't really you know affect the playing of the shoe it's just like okay if my feet are on the verge of getting a little bit tight a little bit painful um definitely something there you go what a cool like look at how that softened up as well um there's been no issues with the grip so far so once we get into shooting that'll be a I think a better test. Um, but one of the things that I am noticing with the boot so far is back here, super comfortable in this heel area. But what I will say is it is, there's a little bit of rotational slippage. So as you guys notice from my grip socks, I don't have any grip on the heel area. That's one thing that I do really like. These are fantastic. These are like one of the best grip socks on the market in my opinion, the Wii foot stuff. Um, but there isn't grip on the outside of the heel, which means I am gonna get a little bit of rotational slippage, um, which isn't out of the question for most football, like most football boots kind of do that for me just because of the way that my foot is structured with the wider midfoot and toe box and then the thinner heel area. But that's just something to keep in mind. Um, nothing crazy. I'm not getting any blisters or anything, so you know, don't worry about that. It's just as I start to break them in, that is something that I'm noticing a little bit here and there. Um, but to be honest, the, the heel slippage isn't enough for me to, you know, not wear these in a training session or a game. Like these are, these are proper class football boots in my opinion. And I would say too, you know, maybe this is something that was, that would be helpful for you guys as well is like, as I'm explaining these little heel slippage areas, um, hopefully, you know, my goal is that by the end of you know, these videos, you guys get an understanding of like, of what to expect breaking a boot like this in, you know, and that, I wouldn't freak out if the first time I wear a boot, I get heel slippage. Like that's a very normal thing for me. And I don't get blisters very often, um, partially because my feet are so calloused at this point. Um, but I would say really like when you guys are breaking boots in, expect them to be a little bit uncomfortable. Like I know that's kind of crazy to say, but like most of the boots that I ever put on, like as I've said in a couple of videos, there's only two or three boots that I've ever been able to jump into without any break in time at all. Like it's literally only two or three. The rest of the boots that I've ever worn in my life, they've all been kind of painful and uncomfortable the first wear or two. And that's just what to expect. So if you expect that coming in, 
then it just makes the break-in time way easier because um, there's not as much, you know, you're not fussing about like, oh, there's too much, there's too much slippage. It's like, no, 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 give it a little bit of time. Look, if they're like, if they're absolutely destroying your feet because they're the wrong size, fair enough. But like, let, you know, give boots a shot. Like they're not meant to be absolutely perfect because they're not custom built for your foot. A little bit of change of skill set here. Last one, bang, into the figure eights. Yes, love that. Sharp turn, see, already getting better. Look at that. A little cut, shot fake, come back. Here we go. And all the way through, nice. Love that, okay, fantastic. So, as I said, one of the things that really gets me going about these is the touch on the ball. Hybrid touch, man. What Adidas have done here for the second generation, and I hope they don't change this for different colors, but the matte finish on these makes the touch on the ball feel so like silky and natural, which is just awesome. So here we go. All right, second round, get through that. Boom, nice. Come out this way. Love that. Oop, missed that round. Okay. All the way up. Boom. A little fake pass. Here we go. This side. And all the way through. Lovely. Next little drill I'm gonna do here is just a warm up for some of the shooting that I'm doing. So I'm basically coming up at full pace as best I can, dribbling through the cones, and then the side that I come out, I'm gonna come and try to hit it. First, we're gonna start with passing, then we'll move into a little bit more kind of structured shot. And I wanna hit the corners. The idea is that with the target to aim at, puts you under a little bit more pressure, um, not only being on camera, obviously, but um, just in general, I would recommend putting some sort of goal or you know, something that you can put on the side. That way you get in the habit of really starting to uh, get those shots off. So here we go. I'll do a little bit of a voiceover um, as I do some of the reps of these shots, which will be great. <clears throat> so shot number one. Feels great. Actually, I'm just gonna talk through these because I just think it'll be better. Here we go. Second one. Nice. A little bit too much gusto on that one. Um, feeling really good at pace, honestly. I like. This is one of those football boots that I think Adidas absolutely crushed. Um, barely feeling the grip so far. Back the other way. Nice. A little bit more shot than I was kind of hoping for first couple rounds, but that's okay. Really starting to get that bend and whip on it, which is lovely. Um, the grip, haven't really noticed it yet. Here we go. Ooh, there we go. Nice. Um, but hitting sort of, sort of those balls that you want to like bend and like whip a little bit, like passes that you would want to hit with a little bit more pizzazz, super nice, super, super nice with these. I would say so far, Little soon to tell, but um, so far, definitely on par with how much I like the grip on the GX. Like, and that's super high praise for a brand new football boot. So, remains to be seen. Obviously, we got to talk about durability of these little fins, but we'll we'll kind of go from there. All right, last couple of rounds on this side. Get some left foot on this last four or so. I'm like that. And I'm going through on the right side as well. Um, both obviously being beneficial for me as somebody who needs to train, but also um, just kind of get both best of both worlds, right? All right, here we go. Oops, see ya. Nice. Yeah, striking surface and passing surface, I think, is fantastic. As I'm coming out of this last one, I'm finding that as I set myself up, it just, it kind of breeds a bit of confidence, which I love in a football boot. The shape of this molds to my foot really well, and so I think, I wouldn't say it's barefoot by any stretch of the imagination, but I would say that they do feel more natural than a lot of other uh, synthetic boots, which is awesome. Lovely, yeah, just, I don't know if this is all Predators, but especially with this one, I do feel like the strike of this ball 
is just so clean. Like it just every every pass I'm doing, every little shot that I'm doing just feels really nice. And I think that's part of that is Adidas not putting bins. Um, is not putting the grip on the instep of the shoe. So you have instead the grip when instead of passing it like this, you get a really cr clean striking surface. And then if I'm gonna whip around the ball and kind of point my toe down, that's when the grip really starts to come in, which I think the placement of those is super, super class actually. Um, just for, uh, just because. Nice, bang. Yeah, lovely, 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 lovely. So far, so good, ladies and gentlemen. So far, so good for uh, for that little passing warm up. Okay, last uh, last little take off the boots before I get into the right side, and um, they're giving me a little bit of hot spots now on the outside. Part of that is could could be because the turf is a little bit warm, um, but also just because you know they're uh, they're breaking in, and synthetic boots tend to do that even if they feel absolutely fantastic. So really no complaints with these so far. Um, again, as I said, some of that slippage in the heel area has kind of gone away at this point. Maybe that's just because they're starting to break in. Maybe that's just because uh, they needed to get a little bit wet, if you will. I know with kind of uh, some pros do this. I've had guys on my team do this and I've seen like top end pros do this is when they have a brand new pair of boots or just boots in general, what you do is you get your socks a little bit wet and it simulates the socks being sweaty and even regular cotton socks actually get a little bit more sticky and stiff inside the boot so that you have less slippage within the football boot which is always a, uh, a big thing especially when you're concerned about like all sorts of uh, blisters and stuff so that's what I would recommend you know if you can get your socks a little bit wet that way you reduce slippage or just you know, be patient, wait for your socks to get a little bit sweaty as you get through uh, a little bit of a session and then um, then it should be good to go. But getting these tied up again for, this is probably the third time, I guess. Uh, I really, again, I, I can't stress enough how much of an improvement I think these are over the accuracy. I know a lot of people loved the accuracy because of how wide they were. Uh, I thought that they did a nice job of wrapping your foot for the most part. I just found them to be a little bit too clunky for what I'm looking for. Uh, really nice idea from a predator perspective. Like as a predator, I think they're really good, but I think this, Pred Strike does such an amazing job at sort of blending the power boot with uh, the modern era of knit and synthetic and all the things that make modern boots so good and the technology so good. Um, as I said before, this upper is a proper winner. I think this Hybrid Touch 2.0 is absolutely awesome. So here we go, let's get into the right side. Nice, good stability there. I really like the way the sole plate digs into the ground as well something that I'm noticing pretty much right away. Really, really nice. All right, here we go. A little off balance there. That's just a form thing, not a boot thing. I'll do my best to kind of correct myself in my form as well, so you, at least you guys can get a little bit of a training session advice as well as we roll through these. Oh. See, striking the ball like that with these grip elements just adds this extra little bit of whip that is so satisfying when it comes off your foot. Like it really pings off your foot, which is awesome. Ooh. That's all right. All right, let's change some camera angles, get you guys a good kind of behind the net shot. All right, last four or five, and then we'll get into some proper, proper strikes. Here we go. Nice, love that. A Little bit off kilter with my right foot, still trying to work on form when I'm striking. Um, but again, I'll kind of keep those comments to myself just because that has nothing to do with the actual boots. <laughs> Lovely, yeah. I, I think this striking surface for passing and shooting is, is proper. We'll get into some pings as well, so I'll do long ball type stuff towards the end of the video. Um, and you guys can see, oh God. I imagine taking free kicks is gonna be sick with these. Haven't done it yet, but we will see. Just effortless, really effortless grip. Lovely. All right, 
into some proper shooting. All right, little shooting sequence here. So we're just gonna do something really simple. So again, through the cone, starting on the outside, cut back inside, cut back on the left foot, and I'm really trying to aim for that far post. I'm not really concerned with uh, speed of ball right this second. I'm gonna try to show you guys a little bit of stuff, but for me as a player, I'm really looking for, as I get through here, testing the boots, touch, 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 really nice across the 18, and then whip it back post as best I can. And honestly, the, the accuracy of these shots is way more important to me at the moment than the power, because that is something that I am trying to get really, really good at, is just be really conscientious of the way that the ball comes off my foot. Um, and that way, as I'm adapting to different types of boots, different types of shots, it all feels super natural, super clean. Um, and we'll go from there. So that's kind of the idea. Now that you guys know what I'm up to, I might whip a few in really, really hard, but um, the goal here again is to just kind of finesse it and really test out that strike skin zone where we get most of like that. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Good hit first of all, but second of all, fantastic feel for them that strike skin upper, really, really nice. Here we go, cut back, boom. Oh, unlucky, sick anyway though. What a, what a nice feeling they did. A Little bit more to the side, but you get the idea, right? Like it's just a really nice, striking surface, especially when you're not really fussed about. Um, oh yeah. There you go, bang. So it's just, it's one of those things like these boots just inspire a lot of confidence when it comes to striking the ball. Let's get you guys behind the goal, show you guys a little bit of that angle as well. Just make sure that I get really good clean contact. Again, the goal is not to go for power, but it is to go for a nice amount of finesse to really connect with that strike skin uh, surface area of the ball. And honestly, if anything else, like what I'm noticing is because of the way that that piece kind of sits in that perfect area, I'm noticing as I come around that final cone, I'm noticing that I'm kind of more conscious of like, okay, this is the area, like I wanna hit that strike skin. And so it's almost like it becomes kind of second nature to hit it with really good technique. Any, of the, any, any guys who wear uh, the Preds at the top level, who obviously most of those guys can strike a ball. Yeah, but um, any of those guys that strike a ball, I think really do a fantastic job of hitting exactly where that strike skin surface is, uh, which is, which is awesome. So if anything else, it'll keep it in mind. Lovely, a little bit higher there maybe, but, uh, yeah, nice, nice, nice feeling as you strike the ball. Last couple here. <laughs> Boom, there it is. Yeah, perfect. I bet that was a great camera angle as well. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Just that kind of bend, bend pass into that four corner. Oh, through here. Nice. Very good. Impressed, guys. These are uh, these are a great striking football. Let's get to the right side. Show you guys some some proper weak foot action. All right, beautiful. Here we go. Let's get some weak foot action again. If you have four cones, you're starting on the outside, popping inside, cutting back, and then really quick touch back across your body. And then again, trying to hit that wraparound shot back foot. One of the things that, uh, uh, there was a video a while ago that Matt Sheldon put up. Um, shout out Matt, he's a great dude. Um, one of the things that he put up as well, and I know this video is not about this, but if and when you can get top end footballs, it is the best investment of your money, hands down, other than your feet. So buy top end boots first when, when and if you can afford them. And then I would highly recommend getting some proper top end balls because a bag of top end balls that you can just like be consistent with, hit really well, they last forever. 
it's, it is by far the best investment, I think, from a training equipment perspective. And then you can always get like, you know, cheap other stuff, like ladders, cones, all that other stuff is really cheap. Or you just find a partner to train with. There you go. Boom. Oy, that's a, that's one to forget for sure. That's all right. Got to get my touch out from under me. It's that weak foot grind. There we go. A little bit better form. Just got to get that accuracy going. Again, as I said, today is about that boot stuff. There we go. Better. Nice. That's fine, honestly. As long as I'm getting on the outside of that pink cone, I'm happy. Testing these boots has been absolutely fantastic. And there we go. Touch. Ooh. Nice. There we go. Fourth time's the charm. <laughs> Let's get to you behind the goal and get some uh, behind the goal footage. Here we go. Last couple here. And then we will finish off with some kind of crossbar challenge-esque. Basically just looking to get some proper like, you know, long ball pings. So here we go. Nice. Little bend and dip there. Fine. Technique is okay. Getting better on my right foot. I'm way better at doing a power shoot shooting with my right foot. The bending is still a work in progress to get that proper technique down, but uh, just like my left foot. But, hey, that's all. That's why we're out here, you know? One day, one day at a time. <laughs> yeah, gotta get it outside of my foot. Needless to say, despite the technique that I'm, you know, desperately trying to work on with my right foot, the boots are awesome. Please don't let my training comments, there we go. Nice, that's better. So please don't let these comments deter you from the boots themselves as a player player issue, not the, not the uh, boot issue, but goodness me, very, very good. Very impressed with these. Let's jump into some uh, crossbar challenge and then we'll finish up the review. All right, last little bit here. So I'm gonna hit a couple of moving balls just inside the D, literally just like a touch and then a little ping into the crossbar as best I can. Um, and then we'll get into some dead ball stuff like some free kicks and all that. Here we go, just a little ping. Yeah, these feel so good. I love the way, we'll try to switch feet as well each time. Um, just so good to just like sit, ping, lovely really really nice connection um, i don't feel like there's as much one-on-one -on -one connection with the ball like there is with some other boots like as i'm striking the rubber elements kind of add a little bit of you know space between where the ball is and where your foot is so as i said it's not it's not quite like perfect touch if you will like it's super connected um there we go uh, but i would say that it really is one of those boots that once you get used to the feeling of uh, those grip elements and where the grip elements fall, like you can kind of sit here and just like, like really whip, like whip as best you can, which is awesome. And obviously that shot is, you know, whatever, but um, really, really, once you get an understanding of kind of like where those grip elements are, oh, what a fantastic, fantastic amount of, uh, of grip that you get with that type of shot, which is awesome. So here we go. Last one, just a little ping. Nice, lovely. Okay, let's get into some free kicks. All right, so as I said, similar to the, um, actually, let's make sure that I'm getting, there we go, so in front of that line, beauty. Okay, so um, <clears throat> as I said, with some of the, uh, the striking from the outside, really what I'm looking for here is to, to get the feel of uh, the ball under because uh, as I said, by the way, quick note, uh, the tongue does slide back and forth. So if you are somebody who really is annoyed by that, maybe these aren't the boot for you. I would imagine that the fold over tongue fixes that issue just because it's like obviously connected to the bottom of the shoe. Uh, but with these ones, the tongue does move side to side a little bit because of the way that the tongue is shaped like a crazy triangle. Sorry, you can't even see my face, can you? Um, the tongue is shaped like this, like a crazy triangle. So there is room on the outside, kind of like little flap wings, if you will. So as the tongue moves, there isn't space like that opens up but it is kind of annoying uh, as well but okay I'm looking for near post little bend up and over the wall here we go so ball speed fine not great fine 
um, technique decent. Just got to get a little bit further under the ball. Here we go. We'll just forget that one existed. <laughs> Actually, no, I always want to remember these ones because then it's, you figured out how not to shoot, right? That's always the point. Here we go. Nice, that's a little bit better. Probably wouldn't get over a wall, but maybe if there was a gap. Nice little technique there. All right, last two. Here we go. Again, dip and swerve is fine. Just getting used to uh, getting used to the turf again. Getting used to all that. Getting that technique correct. Just one little correction at a time. One little correction at a time. Feeling those boots on the outside of my feet as well. So here we go. Again, technique is good, technique's there, but uh, just gotta get under the ball a little bit more. All right fam, that just about wraps up the play test for these beautiful pred strikes. Uh, as I said in the initial review, <laughs> I'm not the best, I mean, I like bright boots, but I'm not the hugest fan of this particular colorway. Definitely makes sense for a launch color. You want it to be memorable. You want it to be bright. You want it to look really loud on TV and stuff for the, the pros that are wearing these. Um, but colorway aside, I think this is gonna be an eight point boot. Like when the one month review comes around, overall rating I think is gonna be above an eight for these. Um, and that's huge. That's like top 10% of football boots get above an eight. Um, really, really lovely football boots. Again, minor issues with slippage in the heel area, but as we speak about in further videos moving forward with these, I think they're gonna be just fine from a lockdown perspective. The, the lockdown just in general is really good with these. I think the Hybrid Touch 2.0 upper does a really nice job of wrapping your foot and not allowing a ton of lateral slippage. That being said, again, with the uh, fact that my foot is really wide here in the toe box and midfoot area, uh, down to about there, um, I am naturally gonna get a little bit more slippage. I've actually thought about putting like little pads on my on the inside of the boots here just to kind of fill out the space a little bit more and that maybe that'll help. But uh, overall, I do think these boots are gonna absolutely crush and I do think that the Pred Strike is a total win from Adidas. I think these take everything that the accuracy was as a Predator and just bring it to a whole new echelon of comfort, of performance, of lightweight, you know, feeling. The Hybrid Touch is one of their, is one of the best synthetics on the market, period, end of story that's ever existed in my opinion. Honestly, I truly believe that. Um, I wore the 2014 World Cup remakes that are all Hybrid Touch. It's a little, that's the 1.0 Hybrid Touch, and those are thinner and just absolutely fantastic, um, but overall, very, very good football boot. What I'll do is I'll leave the initial review for these ones right here. So you guys can click on that one just to kind of get my thoughts of what the initial impressions were. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did like it, uh, if you want to see more of these play test videos, leave your next favorite boot down in the comment section below. As always, be awesome. Take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.